Hi everyone, uh, today I'm going to talk about the Sony ICF 2010 radio. Um, it's a multi-band radio uh, which covers the AM band, the FM and the air band uh, which is the voice communication band for air traffic communications VHF that is, uh, goes from 116 to 136 MHz. Uh, it was introduced in 1985. I have an early model which I bought in 1985 or 1986 and it's still going strong. Today it had some work done on it um, but it's, it's basically uh, the same radio that I bought uh, except for some replacements of uh, the FET which I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, it's one of the best portable shortwave receivers ever built uh, at least for the, um, the recent memory. Uh, there are of course a lot of new receivers that are better uh, but this one has stood the test of time. Uh, and it's controversial of course to say it's one of the best but it's um, it's got a loyal following and people swear by the performance especially uh, it's got this novel feature called the sync detector so the sync detector is um, use especially useful when there is selective fading in the input signal that is the incoming signal um, due to let's say multi-path interference um, or some other um, environmental related uh, fading of the signal so it would probably sound like it's coming in and out the strength keeps changing so there's distortion in the signal so what uh, this uh, sync director does in the sony icf 2010 is to lock the that incoming carrier to a phase lock loop inside the um, radio which then multiplies the, um, that clean rf signal or carrier signal with the incoming signal and then restores a, uh, a clean uh, signal basically coming out of the product of those two uh, RF input and the carrier itself and that is then further demodulated uh, as usual and results in a much cleaner um, output which goes into the intermediate frequency and so on. Um, so you can actually sync above or below uh, that is on the upper sideband and the lower sideband of the of the incoming AM modulated signal. Now there are many um, receivers which have been which have superseded uh, this particular one, the Drakes and various others which you can hear, which you have heard of. Uh, there are also cheaper radios today uh, which have come from China and other countries that um, are significantly easier to use or probably better, better built but um, this radio still is got a loyal following and it's still people are working on it and keep maintaining them. So about this video itself uh, I'm going to talk about the failure of the input FET which is uh, the schematic on the schematic it's called Q303 it's a Sony 2SK152 that's the name of the device it's a JFET and the common problem is that in some of the early receivers there was no diode protection so it was susceptible to uh, blowing up when uh, static electricity hit it uh, and so um, you would basically lose uh, significant sensitivity in the incoming uh, sorry in AM band so in the future receivers they did add some protection and uh, this receiver of mine does have that so it, it probably hopefully will not uh, fail again but you have to be careful with it uh, in, in any case uh, there are two ways to confirm this problem uh, one is to do a voltage measurement on the Q303 drain gate and source uh, um, terminals and the second one is the HIST test which uh, is also well known where you tune the radio to 1620.0 kilohertz and go up plus minus 0.1 kilohertz a little bit more depending on if whether your radio is accurately calibrated uh, or not but it's around this value so you'll notice a significant change uh, in the tone when you actually do this test so that I'll describe that and lastly I'm going to uh, present some receiver input sensitivity measurements which I did on uh, using a RF generator um, and I did it at a few frequencies so you'll get some idea about uh, what this looks like at least on my receiver and hopefully uh, it gives you some idea about how um, most of these receivers do in this uh, AM band at least. 
here's the schematic of the jack board which contains the Q303 FET and the input stage that is the on the left side you see the AM jack and the air, air and FM jacks so signal enters from the left side and goes through a capacitor and a inductor network which finally enters the gate of the Q303 transistor which I've highlighted there and I'm going to inject for the sensitivity test uh, the place uh, the arrow that shows where it's going to be injected so I don't uh, actually use the, uh, the input for either from the uh, antenna itself or from the uh, three and a half millimeter plug so this directly injects it uh, at the capacitor where I soldered in a couple of uh, coax wires to make keep, make it a clean input signal there and uh, so hopefully the results are um, fairly clean in terms of the measurement itself this uh, photograph shows the actual uh, place where I soldered in the wires. The black wire is the ground and the signal coming from my RF generator which is an HP RF signal generator is applied at the using the white or transparent shielded cable there that's coming into the input uh, at the capacitor you can see right above that the brown capacitor so it's AC coupled into the gate of that uh, Q303 which is above on the top and I uh, marked the gate uh, source drain terminals. Uh, and there's also you can see the diode that is used to protect the gate, which is um, uh, basically a diode that is connected with the anode connected to ground and the cathode to the gate itself. Uh, the source is then got a um, in inductor to ground, and the drain is connected to the supply, which is 2.9 volts or so. Uh, the configuration is actually a source follower configuration which uh, is buffers the input and gives a, a low impedance uh, signal to the next stage from the source itself. So this is a very common way of uh, buffering uh, a signal with uh, gain close to unity. So the first test I'm going to show is the voltage measurement test where I'm measuring the three terminals on the FET Q303 in, uh, you have to be in the AM mode for this and uh, what you expect to see is about 2.9 or a little bit less depending on the battery voltage or if you're using the adapter it will be close to 2.7, 2.8 or 2.9 volts uh, and then the source is going to be around 0.2 volts it could be uh, plus minus 50 millivolts here and there that's okay and uh, finally the, the gate is going to be at ground potential of close to zero so I'm going to show the measurement, uh, there's no commentary while the measurement is being made. So you can see the results on my FET, uh, and they look pretty normal to me. The second test is the his test. For this one, you got to tune the radio to 162.0.0 kilohertz. Once you do that, um, you should vary the frequency slightly, uh, plus minus 0.1 or 0.2 kilohertz, uh, and you will notice a significant change in the noise level coming out of the radio. You got to raise the volume a little bit, and uh, you will notice that very clearly if you're if your if your device is okay that the fat is okay if you don't notice any change that means your fat is most likely blown So this is the AM sensitivity test and uh, for this one I showed the connection that I had done earlier on the previous slide where I connected the, the RF generator directly into the uh, signal path of the first stage which goes into the Q303 FET. 
Um, now I did measurements at um, five frequencies here. Uh, the frequencies are 500 kilohertz, one megahertz, 4.5 kilo uh, megahertz, nine megahertz, and 18 megahertz. So this covers roughly the most of the useful band for normal uh, receiver listening in the AM band. I could cover, probably do a few more later, uh, but for now I just wanted to get an idea about uh, the sensitivity across the band. Uh, most people would be listening in the lower bands, uh, in short wave, sorry, in the uh, medium wave or a little bit in the, into the short wave. Uh, and there are not too many stations above 18 megahertz anyway. On the x-axis is the LEDs um, segments that light up on the Sony ICF 2010. It does not quite uh, match up to an S meter, but it's somewhat similar. And on the y-axis is the input uh, signal in microvolts uh, going from 0.1 microvolt all the way up to 1000 microvolts or 1 millivolt. So um, you can see that um, it's the lower frequency bands, uh, the 0.5 kilohertz, 5 megahertz, and 1 megahertz. The sensitivity sensitivity is not as uh, good as in the higher frequency bands, and uh, it's apparent uh, that at least the levels are um, you need at least a microvolt or so uh, for the lower bands to show up on the meter, whereas in if you look at the 9 megahertz, which had some noise problem, I did have a fairly high noise level even without any signal, so I was seeing uh, uh, 6 LEDs light up just with no signal, so I have to check my setup. But if you look at uh, the 18 megahertz, um, it had about 300 nanovolt of input to get to the second LED turning on, and then it uh, seems to go up um, roughly 3 dB for every uh, 3 dB increase and in voltage would uh, essentially uh, increase the LED by one uh, segment lighting up more. But it seemed to have a higher, uh, sensi a lower sensitivity when you went up to um, S, uh, that is a sixth LED and above. You can see the slope has changed to a slightly higher slope, which means uh, sensitivity has actually decreased. Uh, and it's kind of uh, true across all the frequency bands between uh, the one LED and the sixth LED, the, the slightly lower slope which indicates a higher sensitivity and as you go above 6 uh, to 10 uh, the sensitivity drops a little bit and is yeah. so that's I couldn't I could not explain that uh, but it's interesting to note that uh, the radio does seem to perform reasonably well uh, across the band it's just that it's slightly weaker in the lower frequency bands so to conclude this uh, video on the ICF 2010, uh, you can see that um, at the lower frequencies like 500 kilohertz, 1 megahertz, and even up to 4.5 megahertz, those three curves on the, have um, the least sensitivity. And as you go into the higher frequencies, and especially on the 9 megahertz and 18 megahertz, uh, you can work with almost an eight times less um, powerful signal and get the same number of uh, LEDs to light up. Um, I suppose um, this is where uh, the, um, you want higher sensitivities for the longer reach signals, especially on the higher short wave frequencies where you're picking up signals from far away, whereas usually medium wave signals are more or less local signals and probably they can get away with somewhat lower sensitivities. I'm not so sure, but this is uh, one guess how they uh, decide to um, have the sensitivity across the band tuned for this particular radio. There are a ton of uh, videos on this particular radio on the internet and um, I'm not trying to cover a lot of the aspects about usage or some other problems like the battery problems or the error 303 which is a famous problem uh, which shows up. Uh, so I was trying to do more of the measurements on the input sensitivity side, which I thought was interesting to me. Uh, hopefully this was also useful to you uh, to characterize your radio to make sure it's meeting its performance if you have this particular radio in your collection. 
see you next time bye